And joining us now on the Book Talk segment of the show, we're going to talk to one of the uh, co-authors of a book called The Retirement Maze, What You Should Know Before and After You Retire. A lot of people, uh, everybody has to make that decision at some point in their life, but uh, maybe earlier, maybe later. We're going to find out about it. It's a study that was put together by uh, these uh, three people, and we're going to talk to uh, one of the authors called uh, Rip Roach today from up in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Rip, thanks for joining us. How are you? Hi, my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, good to have a chance to uh, talk to you. I had an opportunity to, to read through the book and a really uh, comprehensive uh, study you did. Actually, you're with uh, a group called Marketing Analysts Incorporated, and, and you put this, uh, helped put this whole study together, right? What retirement means to people and what they should know, right? Yeah, uh, we, we conducted a really large scale survey. I mean, Marketing Analyst is a market research company, and Rob Pascal, one of my co authors, actually is hired now, but he's the founder of the company, so we thought it was a good opportunity to kind of the synergy of market research and interviewing lots of people about their retirement experiences, so we talked to about 1,500 people, actually. Retirement, uh, obviously, uh, uh, means something, I think, a little bit different nowadays. Uh, I guess you know, our parents uh, were fortunate enough to have a dad that maybe had a job one place for his whole career. You, you sort of knew when you were going to retire, but, but that, that date uh, in most of his lives uh, changes, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. I mean, there's a lot of uncertainty, especially right now, about when you can retire for you know, the economy being kind of uncertain, and a lot of people are postponing their retirement. But... Our, our hope uh, is that that's uh, not a permanent thing. And the longer-term trend you know, over time is to retire you know, younger. And it seems to have stabilized typically in the mid-60s when the economy is in, in good shape. So, uh, you know, there's, yeah, it, it's, it's a challenge whether you've worked one job your whole life or, or jumped around from job to job because when you retire, the job is gone. All the structure that it gives you is gone, and you are now responsible for putting structure in your own life. And that's a challenge that a lot of people don't really anticipate what's involved with. Yeah, you bring that up in the book, and, and it's a good point. Uh, there are some people that are, are fortunate enough to be able to retire in their 50s, and, and even if you wait till your 60s and you enjoy your job or whatever, or 70s, uh, you have a lot of free time on your hands, whether you need the money or not. If you obviously don't need money to live on, I mean, to, to work anymore, you have a lot of free time. you got to find things to, to fill it. And I think you point out in the study, uh, there's kind of a euphoria for the first, what, six months to a year, maybe two years, and after that, a lot of people uh, grow pretty bored, don't they? Yeah, it's, I mean, that, that honeymoon period, we call it, or euphoria period, it's actually not usually as long as two years. It can be as short as three months to six months. Really? And, yeah, and, you know, it's you know, when you first retire, especially if you didn't much like your job, it's like, yeah, man, I'm free. Uh, <laughs> you know, three months of constantly playing golf or constantly sitting on the beach or constantly sitting and watching TV, pretty soon, you know, the, whatever it is, 12, 15, 18 hours a day that you're awake each day, those hours start to get longer and longer. And you realize after six months, you've still got, you know, if you're fortunate enough to live as long as a lot of people do, you've got another 15 years to go here, maybe longer. What are you going to do? You've got to plan for a way to fill all of that time. And it's, the way I look at it, it's, you know, if you think about, you're born, you graduate from high school when you're 16 or 17, think about all that time you spend. That's how much time you've got after you retire. Mm. You've got to fill it yourself. So it's not just about, yeah, I'm going to go play now. Playtime gets old. Yeah, and, and that, regardless of uh, you know whether you have a great pension or a lot of money or if you have no money, uh, obviously you have to find uh, a job at that point. I think you call it a bridge job, don't you? If you? Yeah, I mean, about one out of four retirees takes a bridge job. Some people take them, unfortunately, because they run out of money, and that's, you know, that's a shame. But other people take them, and this is a much happier circumstance, as a kind of a transition into retirement. They take a bridge job, which really is defined as a job in these cases that you want to take because you love it, and you're doing it on your own terms. You can, you can take it or leave it. You, know, you get paid, but you don't, you, know, you don't have a boss saying, you're going to be here at 8 o'clock in the morning, and you're going to stay at your desk until 5 o'clock. You do it because you like it. A lot of people do consulting jobs, that sort of thing. And it's a great way to transition into the role of complete retirement, which eventually happens for almost everybody. Rich jobs don't usually last all the way through retirement. 
I guess in some ways, obviously, there's you know economic issues. There always have been. I mean, this isn't anything new what we're going through now. But uh, I guess with, as far as retirement goes, uh, there's probably more opportunities, I suppose, for, for older workers now. Uh, am I right about that? Well, you know, that's, I'm not actually sure of the answer to that. I mean, certainly there are some types of, of jobs where older workers are, are welcome. I mean, we, for example, in Charlotte, a hospital down the road where they hire retired people as and actually as volunteers to work at in the lobby checking in patients and, and basically greeting people who come to the hospital and it's a great opportunity um, but in you know it, it's it's kind of up to you to to go out and, and find your own job um, you know whether it's necessarily easier for an older person uh, I'm not really sure we didn't actually get into that kind of right in the book. Well, I just meant it in, the, in our parents or grandparents' generation. Basically, uh, I think you know, Social Security, when it was instituted, uh, most people didn't live past uh, 65 or 70, so you only collected for a few years. Now people are living into their 80s, some 90s, even 100. And I, I guess in that sense, I meant there might be more opportunities for uh, you know, for, for those folks. But uh, Well, yeah, there certainly is more opportunity in terms of you know the amount of time you have available to right. explore and find things. No question about that. I mean, in fact, in the older days, back before maybe the 1950s or 1940s, the the usual thing was you basically worked until you were physically unable to, and then you retired, and you were pretty much <laughs> physically broken down at that point, and usually you didn't live very much longer. No. It was a much more, it was a much harsher way of, of going about things than, than we have now. Um, no question about it. Just touch on a couple of different aspects. Uh, in the book, it's called The Retirement Maze. Uh, Obviously, when you retire, uh, it, it affects your your family uh, and uh, and your marriage. Uh, if if you happen to be still married at the time, uh, can you kind of talk a little bit about what you found out in the study on, on those two topics? Sure. Um, in in terms of marriage or you know your relationship with a significant other, if if you can manage to do it, what we found is that the best thing to do is for let's say a husband and wife, if they're both working, um, retire at pretty much the same time, because when you have, you know, for example, two people who have been working and one stops working and the other keeps working, now you've got a conflict between one person who now becomes the breadwinner, versus you used to have two, and the person who's retired has all day during the week and they're probably going to want to do things, and usually they're going to want to do it with their spouse, but hey, their spouse is at work, so it becomes a bit of a challenge. On the other hand, if you've got a situation, you know, what used to be called the traditional marriage, where the husband is the breadwinner and the wife stays at home and takes care of the house and raises the family, which, you know, there are still marriages like that, of course. In that case, when the husband retires, he's now home. He's used to being, you know, somebody in a position of some authority at work, usually by the time you retire. So now he comes home, and he's going to start trying to run things in the house because that's just kind of the way he's geared. The problem is, you know, his wife's been running the house just fine, thank you very much, and she doesn't need an interloper. So <laughs> you can have some tensions like that. So you really do need to be aware that you know, your life as a married couple is going to change um, you know, when you retire. I mean, obviously, if two working people, a husband and a wife, let's say, both retire at the same time, that's the easiest situation because now both of your life stages have changed Mm -hmm. Obviously, another issue is uh, saving for retirement, and, and again, we kind of go back to uh, you know our, our parents' uh, generation, even before that, uh, where many jobs, uh, if not most of them, had pensions that's pretty much gone away. So you're saving pretty much. It's up to you now. Social Security isn't going to carry you through all by itself. So you have to do 401ks, IRAs, and all that. That's a whole other issue. Investing your money uh, as you go along, right? Yeah, it is, and you know certainly. It's, it's hugely important to, to do everything you can to make sure that you have enough money to, to retire. Um, but you know, a couple of things related to that. One is that just, just having enough money to retire isn't enough. I mean, there's lots of books out there and, and TV shows and everything else telling you how to get enough money to retire, how to manage your finances. But really the way we look at it is having enough money to retire just gives you permission to retire. It doesn't tell you how to retire. That, in the end, is at least as important 
And that's really why we wrote the book, because financial stuff is pretty well covered. The other part, we didn't really find all that much out there. I mean, that's why Rob, my other co-author, Rob Pascal, foundered, foundered his way around for a few years trying to find his way in retirement. <laughs> so, you know, that, that, really, um, that really is you know, very, very important. The other thing we found about money is that although there certainly is, you know, a real amount of money that you probably need to retire comfortably, what's really important is that you have to learn to feel like you have enough money, even if you do. Rob's a good example. He, he did quite well in business, and he retired with plenty of money to cover him for many, many years. But he didn't feel like it. He constantly, once the regular paycheck stopped, constantly worried that he was going to run out of money. Would he have to sell the house? Would he have to go become a Walmart breeder? Would he, you know, he, he was just, you know, and finally somebody said, look, I mean, unless the, you know, the world comes to some total economic meltdown and everybody's in the same sinking boat, you're going to be fine. And, you know, it took him a long time, you know, a couple of years, actually, to, to finally accept that. So it's, it's not just having the right amount of money. It's also you have to be able to be yourself, hopefully correctly, that you really do have enough money. Yeah, it's definitely a, a mindset you have to uh, go through, a bit of a change, obviously, uh, from your working life to, uh, to your retirement life. Well, this book really has some great information in it. It's called The Retirement Maze, What You Should Know Before and After You Retire. We're talking with uh, Rip Roach today. Rip, uh, are you on a website? People get a hold of the book or get a hold of uh, you if they like? Well, yeah, there's a, a couple of places you can go. Certainly, you know, you can go to any you know, Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com and buy the book online. Uh, it's available in some bookstores. You can also find out more about it by going to the, the publisher's website, which is Roman, R-O-W-M-A-N, Littlefield, and uh, search for the book, and you'll find it there, a little biography of the three authors, more about the, what the book is about. So very easy to find. Great. I was just reading a little bit of the bio on one of your co-authors, uh, I believe Louis uh, Primavera. Uh, he either taught or went to my alma mater, Adelphi, so there's a little connection there right. on Long Island. Yeah, I saw that in the notes. So I, that's where I went, one of my colleges. So, oh, okay, yeah. so tell, him, tell him you talk to a fellow Panther today if you see him. <laughs> as, as a Carolina Panthers fan on this end. Of that's right. And on your end, yeah. Lots of You're a Panther as well. Uh, Rip, thanks for talking us to us today, and uh, hopefully we'll do it down the road again. But thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.